We recommend this product be installed by a competent gunsmith. Modification of your firearm may nullify the warranty of the firearms manufacturer. No liability is expressed or implied for damage or injury which may occur from improper use or installation of this product. You are responsible for the safe handling legalities and use of your firearm. Warning, always wear safety glasses when working on firearms. Hi guys, Scott Folk here from Apex Tactical Specialties. Today I'm gonna to walk you through the installation of the Apex Action Enhancement Trigger for the Springfield Hellcat pistol. Tools you'll need for this installation are a 16th inch pin punch, a 3 seconds pin punch, a small hammer somewhere around the six to eight ounce range, and a roll of tape would be handy but is not absolutely necessary. This kit contains a striker spring, a sear spring, and the action enhancement trigger. Following the factory field stripping recommendations, I'm gonna take the pistol, I'm gonna push out the sear housing pin first. That one should pop right through. This is the locking block pin, which is a little more difficult. Make sure that guy comes all the way out. And then the trigger pivot pin. Same thing with this guy, just push it. There's a little bit of spring tension. Push all the way through, pop it out the other side. Now I have all the pins out, ready to disassemble. With the pins removed from the frame, first I'm gonna take out my locking block. I'm gonna pull up on it and just wiggle it up just a little bit. That should allow me to take the takedown lever all the way out, kind of twist it around and pull it out. Whole thing will come out in one shot. Once in there, I can pull the spring off and the takedown lever, and then I can remove the back section as well. Next, I'll, I'll need to remove the slide lock lever. I'll just pull that guy up and set it aside. Next, I'll grab the sear housing. I'm gonna kind of push it forward and I'll be able to pull it up and out. And then my magazine blocking lever will come out of the frame as well. Before we move on, I wanna show you this little component here. This is the sear housing pin safety. It's a little tiny C-clip that sits in the bottom of the sear housing and holds the pin in place. We wanna remove that and set it aside so we don't lose it. Normally it's held in with a little bit of oil or grease so it doesn't go anywhere. We'll reinstall this when we're done. I need to remove the trigger bar from the sear housing. The sear is still under tension, so what I need to do is I need to grab the trigger bar, pull it up and forward, and I need to kind of wiggle it out like so to remove sear tension. Once it gets halfway out, I can kind of pop it out, and now I've got it free of the sear assembly. Now that I have the sear assembly completely disassembled from the trigger bar, I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna look at the bottom. You'll notice that the pin here has a little ring on it that engages the spring. Now that I have the sear detensioned, I can push that pin all the way out, and then I can drop the sear out of the housing to take the spring off. Now that we have the sear and the sear spring out of the housing, we need to remove the sear spring from the sear itself. Notice the split in the bottom of the spring that's closest to the sear itself. We need to roll that around and use that as our gap to disassemble it. You'll have to reassemble in this orientation and we'll get to that in a minute. What I do is I wrap it around the back, I'll put my pin punch in and I'll just basically pull, oh, there she goes, and remove it from the sear. Before you take your sear housing block out of your frame, I wanna show you one thing. This little spring and plunger right here, this little spade shaped piece here that's uh, stainless looking, these parts will come flying out if you're not careful. Um, ask me how I know. Well, because it happened. We spent 20 minutes before this video portion looking for this darn spring. So when you take this out of the frame, keep your thumb over this area because you can lose these things real easily. And the slightest shift of the thumb safety paddle outward to the left of the frame will cause that guy to go launching. So be very, very cautious as you pull this guy out. You might consider putting this into a one gallon Ziploc bag as you take it apart. Remember, the thumb safety model has that little plunger and detent behind here, so we have to be very cautious pulling this guy out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate the frame up, I'm gonna pull the trigger and bar out of the frame a little bit, and I'm gonna rotate the this, this sear housing up and out. Well, as soon as I get there, I'm gonna put my finger on top of that plunger and spring, kind of hold it in place best I can as I remove it. As you can see, it didn't go launching on me this time, but next time it could. So be careful as you take that guy out of there. Now we'll disassemble it. Okay, so taking apart the thumb safety system is a little tricky, but here's what I do. I put my finger over the top edge of this little detent here, and I push the safety from the backside outward, and that detensions the plunger and spring. So now I have a detention and I can just dump it out of the sear housing and not lose it, hopefully. When taking apart the thumb safety model of the sear housing, we have to take the thumb safety off, which means we also have to take off this little pin that holds it in place. It's just a little looped pin, so we're gonna stick a pin punch in and pull that guy out of there. But first, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the trigger bar off the sear. So I'm gonna pull the trigger bar up and out and disconnect it from the sear to, make, to relieve tension. Once I have that there, I'll roll it back up to the top and I'll put the safety up and I can use a pin punch typically to kind of grab this guy and pull it out. You might try a pair of needle nose pliers or you can use a smaller pin punch, like a 1 16th punch, to capture it and pull upward to disconnect it. Remember, when it goes back in, 
the little uh, ridged surface will go forward toward the disconnector spring. And I'll show you that when we reassemble it. With the retaining pin removed, I can remove the right side of the thumb safety by wiggling and twisting and just pulling it simply out of the frame. From here, I'm gonna rotate it up. I'm gonna hang on to the sear. I'm gonna pull the sear and trigger bar forward and out to disengage the trigger bar. Once I have that there, I can pull the other side of the thumb safety off and then the sear and the spring fall out as well. Next, we need to remove the trigger bar from the trigger body. I'll use my 16th inch pin punch and put it in the hole on top of the pin that's closest to the hole for the trigger pivot pin. That's the pin that holds the trigger bar in place. I'll tap that through about halfway. That's normally enough, if I pull my pin out, that's normally enough to get the bar out. You don't have to pull the pin all the way through, so I typically push it that far, and then I leave it like that. At this point, your frame is disassembled and ready for installation of the Apex components. I want to give you a quick side-by-side -side of the factory components versus the Apex. You'll notice that the striker springs are very similar. If you mix them up, the Apex striker spring is slightly longer than the factory component. The sear spring is pretty obvious. Theirs is a straight cylindrical coil. Ours has a bit of an hourglass shape to it. And of course, the trigger body is pretty obvious. To install my trigger bar into my trigger body, I need to align the trigger bar into the hole for the trigger pivot pin. Now, what I have to do is I'll take a piece of business card. This is just one of our cards, but this is the same material as it comes with your product card. So take a little strip off, maybe a quarter inch or a little narrower. I put it on top of the trigger bar. I'll slide this into the trigger body and that kind of wedges it in, and that gives me a chance, if I should pull it out of the way here, gives me a chance to visually align the trigger bar hole with the hole in the body, and because of the friction, it stays put, so I can put it in the vise. Now that I have my spacer and the trigger bar into the trigger, I just need to reconfirm the alignment of my trigger bar into the hole to make sure it's just right. So as soon as I don't see any more metal in there, I'm in just the right location, and I can go from there. It's a slight misalignment, won't hurt anything, but I do want to get it as close as possible. So I can see a little bit of the card in that far side, but that's perfectly aligned. Now what I'll do, is I'll take a piece of business card I already folded over. I just use this as a, as a vice uh, paper to prevent damage to the trigger. I'll put the smooth face of the trigger body against that paper, and I'll hold the trigger bar here, and I'll slowly close the vice jaw until the pin makes contact. Now all I have to do is crank the vice slowly and carefully. You'll hear it kind of pop sometimes as it starts. Well, this one didn't pop, but that's okay. I'm gonna just wiggle the bar. Now, at this point, since I moved it, I've actually dis disaligned the bar. So I'm gonna pull it back out and just take a look. I'm gonna reconfirm my alignment is still good on the trigger bar pin. Put this guy back in the vise, and I'll squeeze it down. And I can feel it kind of capture in here. And then, once it's there, I can feel it wiggle around. I know it's on the pin. I'll go all the way down to that pin touches the side. Now I'll back it off, and I should have my pin just barely above flush. On the opposite side, it's just barely below. It could be used in this position, or if you really want to get perfect with it, turn it over, put your, vice, your paper on the vice anvil, and just tap that guy flat with a flat pin punch. I want to give a quick explanation of why this is such a critical process. If I don't wedge the piece of paper in here, I can crush the trigger body, and we don't want to do that. It can also cause the safety to stick. So we have to be very cautious about this. Take your time and whatever you do, don't put the trigger pivot pin through the trigger bar itself. If you misalign it, you can do some damage. So take your time, little turns at a time on the vise to get it just perfectly into position. Once I have the trigger and bar assembled, I want to remove the shim. And you'll notice that it fall, freely falls around the pin. And this is exactly what we're looking for. The other thing I want to do is check the safety. So I'll hold the trigger body and just flick the safety a little bit and make sure it's popping up in and out on its own. That's what we're looking for to make sure we didn't crush the trigger body. I want to point out something really quick before we assemble the sear and sear spring together. You'll notice our spring has a gap on it just like the factory does. We're going to assemble that on the sear. Remember, this is the top end of the sear. We want that gap to be down when it's installed, but that spring has to be around the back side of the sear when we do so. So when I go to install this guy, what it's going to look like is I'm going to hook it on the front, roll it around the back, and in the installed position, that little gap down there is going to be facing downward, and that's the proper orientation we want to be in. Since we have it disassembled, I want to do a little bit of lubrication since we're in here. What I'll do is I'll pick up the sear, and if you notice, you'll see a little felt core on the inside. That's supposed to be there, please don't remove it. Take a little bit of oil, and I'll put oil on the end of that piece of felt. And just a drop or two, just till the felt basically turns the color of your lubricant. That's all it needs. You probably never need to re-lubricate it after this, but this extends spring life drastically, so add a drop or two of oil to that when you, when you install it, 
and everything is good to go. So you can see the red marks on the sear. I put red ink on the spots that you need to lubricate on the sear when you reassemble it. The idea is that you can see where the lube's supposed to go without it being, and keep it very obvious. So on both sides where it rubs in the housing, and on the top section where it contacts the striker. The rest can be left unlubricated. There's gonna be enough lube floating around your gun. It's not gonna be a problem not to have extra lube on those parts. Now I need to install the sear into the sear housing. You'll notice the sear is in the proper orientation for installation. The slot for the trigger bar on the side is up where the slot on the sear housing is. The high side of the sear is at the back of the frame. So we need to basically install it inside there, but I need to connect the sear spring to the pin that goes through the hole back here first. So what I'll do, I'll rotate the sear around in the sear housing, and I'll basically set that pin and the spring in position. I'll use the little pin here, and I'll capture that spring with it. Once I'm in position, now I can grab the sear, I can hold the pin on the sides under tension, and I can roll the sear itself into the sear housing in, in position, so now I can see the hole through the sear housing. When I flip this guy over, the slot for the trigger bar is roughly lined up. Now I can put the trigger bar in. Proper lubrication is key, so before you reassemble your trigger bar, make sure you lubricate it. You can see again I have the red marker here on the side, as well as on the disconnect surface on the back of the trigger bar. Just put some grease or oil on those too, that makes a big difference. One thing to note is the pin that holds the sear in tends to want to fall through. So what I did is I just took a piece of tape here, and I'm going to basically put that pin back into its final position. I'll put a piece of tape on the back side and wrap it around to the front side just to hold it in place. Once we get the trigger bar in, then we'll take that tape off and we can reassemble it. Do not leave this tape on when you put it back in the frame. It'll cause problems. To install the trigger bar, we have to capture the sear itself. So you'll notice inside I've got the sear, and the sear is under spring tension. So what I do, I'll use my trigger bar to capture that sear spring, sear itself, push in and kind of pull it forward to go all the way down and capture. In this case, it kind of rotated. So I'm holding my thumb on top, pushing and holding on the sear on the bottom, pushing the sear forward, kind of under, against spring force. I'll put the trigger bar in, try to capture that guy, pull it forward and seat it into the sear. Oh, there we go. You know you've got it when your sear is all the way, your trigger bar is all the way down against the sear housing right there. Before I put the sear housing back in, I want to show you something. If you use the tape method that I showed you, remove the tape. Don't forget that part. If you look down here on the pin, it's got a little annular ring that locks in to the spring itself. What I'll do is I'll move the spring over till it kind of clicks into position. If it doesn't click, I'm just going to move the pin. There we go. And make sure the spring seats on that. Once that's there, it's not going anywhere. Now, this, now the tape is no longer necessary, and this can go into the frame. If you didn't lubricate the spring the first time around, now's a good time to do it. You can just put a drop right here on the outside, it'll soak into the coils, and you're good to go. But not absolutely necessary if you did it in the first place. With the sear housing reassembled, we're going to put the sear housing pin safety back in place. All I do, I'll take a little drop of oil or grease, and I'll put it on the hole for the pin, and just minorest amount is all it needs. All we're trying to do is add some lubricant there so it acts as an adhesive to keep it in place. I'll take the pin, I'll just push it on my finger, and it'll normally stick right to the flesh, put it over the hole, and it'll sit right in there, and then we can reinstall it in the frame. Make sure when you put this in the frame, that's in place. Reassembly of the thumb safety sear housing is a little more complicated than the standard, so I want to go through it specially here. Make sure when you assemble the sear, you assemble it with the sear spring opening in the down position, as you can see here. What I'll do is I'll take that assembly there, and I'll flatten it out, and I'll roll it around, and I'm going to set that into the sear housing. Pick up my little, my little safety here. I'll set that into the housing, and I'll capture that spring with my thumb safety left side that's the longer piece. Once I have that in place, I'll roll the sear around and up into the sear housing into position. Once I have it roughly in position, I'll turn the whole thing over, and now I can see my opening for the trigger bar. With my left side thumb safety in place, I'm holding everything in position here. I've got my fingers on top of the sear and on the bottom of the sear. I'll take my trigger bar and I'll push the sear forward under some spring tension here, just kind of holding on to it. I'll take the trigger bar, capture that sear, pull forward, and I'll engage the sear trigger bar into the sear. You can feel it kind of drop in. You know when you're fully engaged in the sear when the trigger bar sits all the way down against the sear housing. In this case, I'm fully in position and I'm ready to continue on. When you go to install the right side of the thumb safety, you'll notice that the left side pin is not centered up inside the hole in the sear housing. That's normal. You have spring tension holding and pulling on it. So it'll center itself when you get there. So what I do is I take my thumb on the back of that thumb safety, or my fingers on it, and you can kind of wiggle it around as you need to. 
wiggle it into position, and I'll put the thumb safety on and press it in. You can feel it seat on, and then give it a squeeze all the way across. It will not sit all the way down. You'll see this gap on either side. That's an adequate gap for the frame to work on both sides. This is normal. With my thumb safeties on, they're misaligned currently. I need to rotate one down until I can see through the little tiny hole in this rear housing. See that little guy in there open up? We need to get that guy aligned. So you may need to pull outward or inward on that, right on that other thumb safety until you get it mostly aligned. Once it's aligned, oops, see how it moved? Once it's aligned, we're gonna stick the little retainer pin back in there. So now I have it there pretty close. I'll take my retainer pin and I'll install it. Here's the retaining pin that has to go back in. You have a straight leg and a curved leg. The straight leg goes through the hole. The curved leg goes toward the spring for the, sear for the connector. So it goes in in the orientation you see here, yet on the inside. So that's critical when you assemble it. If you assemble it backwards, you're gonna have to take it apart and reassemble because your thumb safety will not work properly. So let's go through that now. So this is obviously the ideal alignment for the assembly. Uh, this is gonna be a lot of movement as I go to put it in. So my pudgy fingers are gonna block the camera for a second. So the whole point is you're gonna get that pin to go in. And in this case, can I get it in, in one shot? Uh, almost. All right, what I'm gonna keep doing is, oh, there we go. I'm gonna rotate, twist, and just kind of push it until the pin goes in. Once I'm in, pull on the right side and make sure it doesn't go anywhere. You need to make sure that that, the retaining pin, at the first notch right here, is inside the pin. And you don't wanna push it all the way down, right where it's at is where it's supposed to be. It will stick up ever so slightly out of this rear housing, as you can see there, but that's perfectly okay. So this is the critical part. This is where you have the most chance of losing something. So be very cautious here. Our little retaining clip, we're gonna put back in. What I like to do is I like to put a little drop of oil on this rear housing in the uh, little slot where that guy goes, a little hole. I'll pick that up with my fingertip. Oop and I'll drop it into the hole. The orientation of that C-clip does not matter. It can sit anywhere, any orientation, just set it in there. That's first, that's easy. Here's the more difficult part. The detent and the spring have to go in to the sear housing right here. Here's the problem. The, sear ha the, the thumb safety can shift in and out, left and right, here. Well, if you allow it to shift to the left, it pops the plunger out from underneath. That's how we disassemble it. You have to hold it to the right and keep it there once it's in place. So this is where it gets difficult because on camera, I'm gonna be pushing on it and there's a possibility I push it against the table and I launch this guy. Again, ask me how I know. So we're gonna go through this and we're gonna try to get this done in one shot, but we'll see how it works out. First, I'll take the detent plunger itself. It doesn't matter which way you put it in. There's no top or bottom necessarily. The little V goes toward the thumb safety, like so. And as the thumb safety's down, that guy pushes forward into the notch in the thumb safety. So our spring is gonna hold that guy in place. So here's where it gets difficult. I'm gonna put a drop of oil on here to hopefully help keep the spring in place while I mess with this. Act as almost an adhesive as we play with it. Again, this is the easy part right here, but I'm just gonna set the spring in. Now is where it gets difficult. I'm trying to keep pressure off the bottom of this here housing so I don't push against the table and knock the thumb safety away. I have to hold this, the detent down best I can and I'm gonna use my pin punch, I'm gonna press in and down into the slot, trying to get it to stay, and looks like I might have gotten it. Oh, there we go, okay. So, in an ideal world, let's see if I did it right. Nope, I didn't, okay, that's okay. The little plate popped up on me, so I'm gonna take, the, take it out and try it again. So we'll do, it, do this again and we'll come back to it. Okay, let's try this again. Um, I don't even know what number take this is, but we're gonna give it a shot. So, I got my plunger back into position here, or the detent back in position. Put my spring, oh, oh, dang it. my spring back on this guy, if I can hold on to it. Come on now, there we go. Spring back on that guy. Again, I'm gonna try to hold it now with my finger. I'm gonna press forward with this, whoa, spring and plunger. The problem is I need to get my finger up high enough to hang on to that plunger, but I can't because my thumb's in the way. So I'm gonna try holding it from a different perspective, maybe like this. Again, I'm gonna press forward with the sear spring, with the little plunger spring into the detent. I'm gonna push forward and I'm gonna down into the groove and I think I got it, ha ha. Let's find out. I'm pressing the thumb safety away from the plunger at this point toward the table. And once I have it there, I'll press the, the safety and detent down. It looks like I got it, okay. That's the proper orientation. It's a bit tricky. So once you have it here, you gotta go right into the frame. So what I'm gonna do is I've already got my little magazine uh, uh, safety thing here already in the frame. 
as if getting the plunger in place in the first place wasn't hard enough. Now getting it into the frame can be just as difficult. This might take a few attempts, so be patient and take your time. Once I have everything fully assembled like, like we've seen here, I'm gonna go ahead and drop my trigger body first into the trigger mortise, and I get my sear housing into the frame as best I can. Now I need to get the frame hooks to, the sear housing hooks to hook in and drop into position. Now that that's mostly there, I'll realign my trigger and get that guy to fully seat. Now it's time to put frame pins in. Get this back pin in first. Nothing else matters until that's in place because that'll keep all this stuff in position. Once we have the sear housing in place, so the first priority is getting that sear housing pin in. So I'm gonna flip the frame over. I'm gonna start my pin in from the right side. I'm gonna push it down as far as I can, and then I'm gonna go ahead and tap it in position to make sure it's seated. With my sear housing pin in place, the assembly of the front section of the frame is identical to the non-thumb safety. So we'll refer to that portion of the video for that installation. The first step in reassembling the frame is putting the magazine blocking lever back in place. That's this little guy here with the wedges on it. You put that flat toward the back, set it in the little notch in the right side of the frame, and I push it roughly halfway back where that, where that pin is to make sure it's out of the way of the trigger. I'll take the trigger that's in the sear housing, I'll rotate the trigger body forward, I'll drop it into the mortise. That allows me to then set the sear housing block into the back of the frame. And when I put it in here, I wanna catch the little hooks on the back inside of the frame and then seat it down so I can put the pins in place. Once the sear housing is reinstalled and the trigger's in place, I wanna make sure the magazine blocker is in place. So I'm just gonna move it back and forth. And it's got a little slot it sits in so it doesn't have to go very far. Just make sure it's in position because that will affect things later. Now I'm going to put back in the locking block and the slide lock lever. So first thing I'll do is I'll take the slide lock lever spring, put that back on the slide lock. The little tab here on the bottom will sit into the notch, into the hole on the locking block. Once I'm there, I'll raise the frame up. I'll take my slide lock lever, put the hole forward, drop it down, and you can see it sits in a little notch in the frame. Once that's in position, I'll take my locking block with the spring on it, and I'll drop that guy down into the frame. You'll notice there's a pair of notches right up here at the front of the frame that slides into. Once I start it, it should go all the way down and the holes should align and I'm in the right position. I wanna go over and confirm where the pins go in the frame before we get back to reinstallation. Obviously the larger pin is the trigger body pivot pin. The, other, the next pin down has two annular rings in it and only two rings. That is your locking block pin. And the pin with the three rings is the pin for your sear housing block. Keep that in mind when you install these because you could mix these two up. We're gonna start with the trigger pivot pin, the larger of the two pins. It doesn't matter which side it goes in, doesn't matter which way it goes in. I prefer to start from the right side of the frame and go left because I capture the trigger body itself. And as I push through, I have to flip the frame over and I have to capture the slide lock lever around that pin. And so I have to move it maybe up and down and move it around under spring tension until it just locks up, there it is, until it finds its, its position. From here, I can push it down on the table and it'll lock it in. Now I can put the next pin in. I'll take the pin with the two annular rings. This is your locking block pin. And I again, will start from the right to the left. It makes it a little easier. There's a retaining pin that locks into this notch that we we're going to use. So we start from the right side. It goes all the way down and it overtakes that pin, that spring and pushes it in. In this case, I'm a little above flush. I'll take my hammer and get a little tap. Make sure I'm below, I'm not quite there. So I'll use my pin punch and I'll just push it over. And now I'm roughly flush on both sides. Next pin I'll do, I'll hold the sear housing down with my thumb, take the sear housing pin, again, any direction from any side. I'll put it in the frame, push it down. I'll use my pin punch to press it into position. Double check the other side. I'm a little low, so I'll just kind of push it back here. And we're in position. Now all I have to do is put my takedown lever back in. The final step in frame assembly is going to be reinstalling the takedown lever. You'll notice the end of the takedown lever has kind of a a half circle cut on it. That's intended to actually uh, overtake that spring that interrupts the hole right there at the back. So what I'll do is I'll put it in where it's facing forward. I'll rotate it upward and I'll push it in and it should pop past that spring for us to work with. Once it's past there, I'll align it with the opposite side of the sear housing or the, the locking block inside there. And again, I'll roll it up and it should pop itself right back in the frame, like so. Once it's there, I can roll it down and then back up, and I know I'm in the right position, and now we can put the slide back on. Now that we have the frame reassembled, we're gonna do a function check. What I need to do, first of all, is take my takedown lever and put it in the forward firing position to make sure everything is as it would normally be fired. 
Next, what I'll do is I'll put my finger on the trigger and I'll hold it down. I'll go to the disconnector over here with my pin punch and I'll press that. That goes in, this here pops up into the reset position, the capture position to, fight, to capture the striker. From here, I'll, put, I'll hold my trigger, finger on the trigger and I will press the trigger bar forward slightly until that disconnector pops back out, back here. I'll do it again. Trigger down, disconnect, here pops up, trigger bar forward, disconnector pops back out. When I pull the trigger, the sear pops back down again. This is proper function. We need to make sure the sear is moving down. When the disconnector gets pushed in, the sear pops up, like so. And then when I press forward on the trigger bar, the sear resets and is able to fire again. For those of you with the thumb safety model, we wanna go through thumb safety checkout first. First, we need to pull the trigger body forward and hold it there. That's gonna tension the sear and allow us to articulate the thumb safety. All I'm gonna do is push the safety up and down a couple times, make sure it goes up and down, locks in place and locks down. From here also with the safety, with the safety up, I'll pull the safety on the trigger first and then I'll pull the trigger ba body back. And you'll notice the sear doesn't really move. It moves a little bit, but it doesn't come back far enough to tilt down, which is what we want. I'll push the trigger back forward, thumb safety down, pull the trigger and you can see the trigger articulate all the way, the sear articulate all the way back. So this is normal function, safety off, with the safety on, this is normal function. Very little movement of the sear, and the sear does not drop to allow it to fire. This is proper function. To replace the striker spring, you first have to remove the back plate from the slide. So what I'll do is I'll use my pin punch and push on the little rectangular block at the top here. I'll slide the back plate down just a little bit until it clears. And then I need to push the back plate off. Remember, your extractor tension comes off of this little guy here too. So you're gonna have both these guys wanting to pop up. So I put my thumb over the top and I expect it to hurt a little bit as they pop up, which it does. Back plate comes off, now the two springs are, un are detensioned. I can take my finger and just pull the striker up and out. So I can now disassemble that and put the new spring on. Now I need to disassemble the striker. I have to pull off the two spring cups off the front. I'll use my roll of tape to support it. So I'll kind of hold the housing against the inside here. I'll pull the spring tension down and I'll pull the cups off. You need to wear glasses when you do this part. This is the most dangerous part because springs can come flying up. Relieve tension. Pull that spring off, and now I can put the new one on. I want to remind you again the difference between the Apex spring and the factory spring. The factory spring is slightly shorter than the Apex spring. So when you go to install the kit, install the longer of the two springs, that's the Apex spring. I'll take the Apex striker spring, put it over the striker itself, and here's where I will compress it, hold it down, and I'll put on one half of the spring cups. You can pretty much put them on and then rotate it around once it's in position. I'll put on the other half, made up to it. Uh, hard to see in here, but you get the idea. Hold them together and then gradually release spring tension to put them back. Now we're ready to reassemble it into the slide. Before we put the striker back in, I want to point out the extractor spring uh, retention cap on there. There's a little slot that the back plate of the slide has to go into. I want to angle that so it's not perfectly parallel. It's kind of kicked out just a little bit to capture the back plate as it goes in. So the orientation it's in now is just about right. It's angled just a bit. I'll take the striker itself. I'll put it into the slide, I'll press it down until it stops. From here, I'll take the back plate and I'll use this to press the striker in against spring tension and start to capture the striker spring and the back slide. Now, what I'll do, I'll write this so you can see it better, I'll push this guy down under tension, I'll push the back plate up and it went all the way in and we're fully seated. Now we're ready for a function check. Before we reassemble, we want to do a full function check. Remember, on every firearm, you should do a function check before final assembly or shooting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press the striker forward, make sure that I do not protrude into the breech. I'll press the striker block in, push the striker forward, and see that it is cleared. It is, it, the striker is protruding into the breech. I'll let the block up, pull the striker back, push forward again, and I've confirmed that my striker block is fully functional, and my striker is floating as it's supposed to. This is proper function. Before I put the upper assembly back on the frame, I want to do some lubrication. I want to go over that. You'll notice on the locking block on the rails, there's some white already. That's metal on metal burnishing. We need lubrication there. Same thing on the back rails, on the disconnector itself, and on top of the sear. Now we've already lubricated the top of the sear per prior in this video, but again, I want to cover that section as well. So here's what I'll do. I'll take a bit of oil and I'll put a drop on top of each rail. A little more on that one. What I'll do is I'll use my finger and I'll rub the lube away from the outside and kind of brush it back on. That'll capture lubricating the top, the outside, and it'll fall lube underneath. So same thing on the backside, I'll push the lube away, 
rub my finger back and that'll cause the lube to fall around the outside. Same thing on this guy, you kind of have to move it in because there's not much space for that. Same thing over here. Now we've got lubricated frame rails. If you can see it glistening, it's lubricated. If you can't, it's not. On top of the sear itself, I'll just put a little drop here, again, like we talked about doing earlier. And then on the locking block itself, right here, this is your lockup surface for your barrel. I put a drop on that guy right near the front so you can see a little bit of lube right there just to make sure it's got some lube. I'll do the same method. I'll put, push forward, I'll pull back to try to get the lubrication underneath. The surface underneath here is your unlocking surface. This is where your barrel hits under recoil, and you want lubrication in there to prevent a little bit of damage or to prevent any kind of galling. As you can see, I lubricated the frame rail, but I didn't actually get the disconnector itself. So I'll just come in here with my lube, and I'll put a drop right over it. Make sure I've got some lubrication on that. That rides on the slide, and that needs to be lubricated to maintain proper function. Lubricating the barrel is critical because it's a metal-on-metal -metal contact for most of the slide-to-barrel contact points. So you'll notice the smiley face across the top of the barrel and across the bottom. This is normal. You're not, you're not going to have this uh, permanent and perfect every time. So just be aware you're going to get some wear on that, those surfaces. We're going to lubricate those. I'll put some oil on the top, a drop or so. I'll smear that around across the top, roughly half. Flip the barrel over, and I'll do the same thing on the bottom, going almost all the way to the muzzle, and just wipe the excess off the tip. That's where you need the most lubrication as well as the unlocking surface down here needs to be lubricated. So I put some oil right there and make sure it gets underneath that locking surface. And that's all you need for barrel lubrication. With our slide and frame properly lubricated and reassembled, we're gonna do a final functions check. First thing I'll do, check and make sure my gun is unloaded. Um, since I've done that, slide forward. I'm gonna check this trigger safety, make sure it springs out and back every time. I'll press on the trigger body, and I'll make sure that the trigger safety hits the frame and the gun does not fire. Now what I'll do is I'll put my finger on the trigger, I'll pull the safety, pull the trigger and fire, hold the trigger down, cycle the slide, make sure it's all the way in battery, release, re-engage, dry fires again. One more check just to be certain, I'll release it, I'll let the safety out, press the body, make sure it doesn't fire, press the safety, and it dry fires. This is proper function. So, you guys, we're finished. I hope you enjoy it. If you have any problems, give Apex a call. You know, customer service numbers on the website and on the cards. See you later.